Hi, my name is Frank, and I started a YouTube channel. As an emergency medicine physician, I want to try to accomplish several different things. I want to try to provide some insight into how healthcare professionals see the world in somewhat of a different light. I also want to provide an outlet or catharsis for myself, because I've got a lot of stories to share if you're willing to listen. And hopefully along the way, I can provide some level of entertainment. Now I'm going to be totally honest and extremely frank. This is my channel. Hi, in this episode of Extremely Frank, I'm going to share with you what I believe is the best way to kill flies. Now, I know you may think this is a little bit off topic, but having worked in the emergency department for many, many years, I've become somewhat of a germaphobe. I'm constantly wearing gloves and washing hands and using Purell all the time, despite the very fact if I've touched a patient or not. And like many of you, I hate the common house fly that enters our own homes. Now, the common house fly, known by its genus and species name as Musca domestica, is a fly that only lasts about 30 days and then it dies off. But in that time frame, it can cause a lot of heartache. Now, flies don't have a teeth or a jaw, and the way they take in their food is they have to take it in a liquid form. So in order for them to do that, what happens is they, for example, may land on a sandwich or a piece of pizza you have. And what they do is they vomit or regurgitate out enzymes to help liquefy that food, and they then slurp it up through a, a long projectile opening called the proboscis, and take it into their body. And um, obviously, you don't want to have that food after it's landed on uh, something you're about to eat, vomited all over it, and then sucking up and liquefy that food. I mean, it, it sounds disgusting. In addition to how they eat, what they land on is no less disturbing. We know that flies are attracted to uh, waste and garbage and rotting and spoiled food, but they also land on uh, feces and other uh, pretty bad things as well. And the problem is, is when they land on those things to try to eat something, they also get on their legs the material they're landing on. So they not only get the germs and bacteria, but they also get those particulate matter. And the problem is, is that when they come into your house and they decide to land on your food, first of all, we obviously know they vomit and uh, release enzymes, but they also can transfer germs and bacteria and other things they've touched like fecal material. And it's believed that flies can be responsible for up to 65 different human disease, things like cholera and, and dysentery and typhoid fever and tuberculosis. And these are all things that we are uh, not looking forward to getting. So these are another reasons why um, it bothers me when house flies get into the house and are buzzing around. And if this wasn't bad enough, flies also poop. And it is believed that flies... Uh, defecate or poop every time they land on the surface, even on the surfaces they're about to eat. So this makes it even more uh, disgusting uh, for me as it should be for you as well. So I think we can all agree that no one likes flies. But I think the problem is, is how we try to get rid of them once they enter our house. Now traditionally many of us use a fly swatter. Um, but the problem is, is that with the fly swatter is that many times we miss with those fly swatters. In addition to that, fly swatters are hard to use when, for example, they're in the flies gone in between a set of Venetian blinds on a window, or it's landed on an odd-shaped object, or something that the surface is rather um, soft or irregular. So that makes it a little bit more difficult using a fly swatter. And then Lastly, using a fly squatter is that it kind of makes a mess. So when you use a fly squatter, you smush the bug and it's got its guts and its blood all over, which is already, I've already told you, flies are pretty disgusting as it is. So that's one of the problems using a fly swatter that I see. But if you are going to use a fly swatter or a newspaper or rolled up magazine, why is it so hard to hit the fly? It all comes down to the structure of their eye. They have what we call a compound eye, which basically means they have thousands of visual nerve receptors called omatidia that basically detect light. And by the very fact that their eye is a spherical or dome-like in structure, gives them a close to 360 degree field of view, which gives them a great awareness of their environment. In addition to that, they have um, a great ability to detect uh, flickers or flashes. 
Uh, for example, a fly can detect 250 flashes per second. As compared to a human, we can only detect up to 60 flashes per second, which gives them a, a huge advantage when it comes down to motion. So what this really means is that flies perceive things at a much slower speed. So when we see things going in a normal motion, in terms of how the fly perceives it, everything is moving much, much slower. So it gives them a great advantage in terms of avoiding things like a fly swatter because what we see is coming fast, they see is coming in a slow motion fashion and it gives them a much better opportunity to avoid getting hit. And that's why it is very difficult to hit a fly with a fly swatter many times. But their eye is certainly by no means perfect. First of all, they, are, uh, they have limited color perception. Um, they can't detect uh, whites or yellows. They can't distinguish between the two. They can't see reds. Um, so they do have some problems with vision. By the very fact, also, they don't have pupils, which means they can't contract or dilate. Uh, means they can't focus on anything. So they have, they're have they very, very short-sighted. They can see pretty much clearly about a yard or a little bit more out, but no, no more than that. Um, but they're very good in detecting motion. That's why when you coming upon a fly and they see a hand or a magazine or a fly squatter coming, a big object coming, they can detect motion very, very well. It's all due to uh, this ability to detect flicker or flash rates. And they also have hair and antennae that can feel the air when you move, which gives them another advantage in terms of detecting if they're about to get hit. And I'll leave a link in the description so if you want to read about it, it is quite interesting. But they are much more aware of motion than we are and they will fly away or move much quicker when they see anything coming at them even if the object that's coming at them is not a threat because they can't tell but the very fact that they can see the motion they're not going to take any chances and they're going to move very quickly and that is one of the reasons why it's so hard to hit them or catch them now there are other ways of uh trying to you know kill a fly in the house um, you have for example those um, chemical traps um, and those fly uh, strips, uh, which can obviously has an attractant, a chemical that attracts flies to them and then gets them stuck and they stick there. Um, I really don't like those because especially if you have uh, pets in the house or you have small children, um, it can be a little dangerous. And in addition to that, they're, they're a little disgusting. So I'm not a big fan of those. There are also the uh, UV, there's a indoor uh, bug zapper and also the one uh, devices that have a UV light which kind of attracts the bugs to it and, and capture it once it gets in there. Um, I'm not sure how effective they are, but I also don't know if I like the very fact of having like an electric bug zapper indoors uh, constantly zapping and making that noise. Um, that seems to be a little bit uh, disruptive in the house. There's an interesting uh, one I've seen. It's the electric uh, fly swatter. Um, it is. Uh, it is. It looks pretty effective. It looks like a. It looks like a, a yellow tennis racket with wires instead of strings. And then if it comes into contact with a fly, if you're swatting it in the air or touching it against a surface, it will obviously shock them and uh, render them uh, <laughs> dead. In this video, you can see with the electric fly swatter having such a large surface area, it is easier to hit the fly. And when it touches them, it electrocutes them and kills them. In this close-up demonstration, you can see where the fly is touching the two wires, completing the circuit, basically electrifying it and killing the fly. Um, but it does have the same issues that a regular fly swatter has. Number one, it can't reach areas where, like for example, Venetian blinds or like flowers or some areas where it's hard to get at. And once again, the fly is pretty good, so um, you have to still be pretty quick in order to uh, catch the fly in mid-air if you're going to try to swat at them. So it does face those things, but um, as you can see, it is pretty uh, interesting. And the, the last one I thought I would just bring up is the uh, the salt bug gun. And that one does look uh, interesting and it does look effective. It looks like a, a little mini shotgun and what you do is you fill it up with some salt and then you uh, cock the weapon and then when you see a bug anywhere that's landed, uh, or you can try to shoot them out of the air. You fire it and it has like a shotgun effect where it shoots out a bunch of salt and it renders the uh, fly um, unconscious or you can even kill them. Uh, one of the reasons I don't like this, um, as you'll see in the video, is that 
it, it leaves a bit of a mess. It shoots quite a bit of salt out. So you once you you know kill the fly, you've got to you know clean that up, and then you've got to clean up a bunch of salt as well. And that can be a little bit more difficult, especially if you're uh, you're shooting it in areas like where there's carpeting and small areas. Now you can see this video. The gun is quite effective. You know, it shoots like a shotgun, so it hits a sprays out a big thing of salt, and you don't have to really be that close or that accurate. All you have to do really is to locate your target, point in the general direction, and fire. And But you'll notice here that most of these demonstrations are done outdoors. And the reason why is because it does spray quite a bit of salt out. And once you kill a fly, you've got to then clean the fly and then pick up the salt. As you'll see here, there's a big spray of salt here. And that's a little more difficult to clean up like inside a house. In addition, it does cause some damage inside the house. It can ruin paint, as you can see here on this leaf puts a bunch of little holes in it and it's been shown to cause some damage to indoor interior like paint and some other woodwork so you have to be aware of that but it certainly does look interesting and it does look fun so I I have to give kudos to that uh, as an interesting way of doing it but once again it does cause a little bit more of a mess than um, than I would like but I believe I have truly the best way of killing a fly in the house and that is with one of these now, I know what you're thinking. I'm crazy, but let me explain. First of all, I mentioned to you before that the eye's ability, the fly's ability to see things is somewhat limited. Um, they're great at seeing big objects and big motions, but they're not good at seeing small things in tiny areas. So, and the very fact they have, they're very short-sighted gives you an advantage. So you can literally come up upon a fly in a linear fashion with a rubber band ready to go and you can get as close as just within three to four inches of uh, their distance, and they're not even going to know it. Um, in addition to that, it's usually a very, very clean kill. You know, not all the times, but it's usually a very clean kill where you hit it, you stun the fly, um, and there's nothing, no residue, no uh, body parts. Um, and mo sometimes if you hit them just right, you'll actually separate the head from the thorax, which is... Uh, somewhat gratifying because you're there's a real skill involved in that um, and the last thing I will say is that you can it's a cheap uh, alternative using those other devices and in addition to that you can get into pretty tight spaces so if you have a fly in between blinds you can actually get ready to hit kill the fly without having to use like for example a fly swatter where you'll never be able to hit that fly in between the blinds or in a very odd area on a curved surface or uh, if they're on a flower or um, on something where the, op the surface is soft, it makes it very hard to kill the fly with those other devices as I mentioned before. So for those three reasons, I think this is really the best method. And I will tell you, I have a pretty close to a 95% success rate um, because it's not very hard. You literally can get with a few inches and if you're just aiming it that close, your aim is going to be very good. But once again, I do, uh, recommend if you're going to use a band, make sure you use a uh, size 64. It's a little thicker and it gives a little bit more leeway in terms of hitting that fly. And for those reasons, I think it's a really great way of doing it. And I will tell you the last reason why I think it's the best reason is that it is strangely satisfying when you hit a fly with a rubber band because it does take a little bit of skill. Not a lot, but it does take a little bit of skill like you're kind of a sharpshooter. And uh, I'll show you a bunch of demonstrations um, of my technique here. Now in this example, there's a small fly in my bathroom and I wanna show you how close I can actually get to this fly. I'm coming in a slowly in a very linear fashion and then you just let go of the rubber band and you hit it. Now unfortunately this fly was actually smaller than the rubber band so it did leave a bit of a mess. Um, it did cause the body parts to go all over but it just shows you how close you can get to the fly itself. Now in this example, you can see there's a fly on the Venetian blind. So this is where you can actually use this rubber band much better. And you can see I get really, really close. Now unfortunately, I did miss in this example because I was rushing, but it just shows you how you can use rubber band for this situation. Now in this example, you can see there's a fly in my window and I'm going very slowly. The fly has no idea I'm coming, can't feel me with the air. I just let go the rubber band and this was a clean hit and a clean kill. And you can see um, I got really close within three inches and obviously all you have to do here is just pick up the dead fly and you're done. Here's another example where um, 
it's on a corner of uh, of the wall here. And once again, I want to show you that I'm walking really close. So you don't have to be very accurate when you're this close, but you can get very close to the fly. It has no idea you're coming because you're going in linear fashion, not moving, and you just let go of the rubber band and you shoot. And here you can see, in this case, I actually stun the fly, but the fly is not going anywhere. I'm going to show you this in slow motion here so you can actually see. I'm actually getting very close. The fly has really... No idea that anything's uh, about to threaten it. And then you just let go of the rubber band. It's so fast. And you can see here, I'm like three to four inches away. Let go, and you can see the fly is just getting hit in the air and has no idea what hit it. And then obviously it's, it's dead. In this last example, I actually hit a fly off of curtains. And this was actually a totally clean hit where I was able to separate the head from the body. And um, this just shows you, you can do it on soft surfaces. And this was satisfying. Now there are obviously many different ways to kill a fly, but I hope with this video, I convinced you that this is the best one. It is cheap, it is easy to get into tight spaces, it usually does result in a clean kill, and it is oddly satisfying. Now if you get a chance to do this, I would love to see your comments, pictures, or videos based on your experience. Now I've left some links in the description below to some of the products I mentioned, as well as some of the topics I brought up. And if you did enjoy this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that share notifications button. It truly does mean a lot to me. I hope to see you on the next episode.